Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, so we're just going to carry on from where we left off. Uh, so this tutorial, we're going to um, basically store the maximum falling uh, speed in a variable. So when our player hits the ground, we know whether to play a normal falling animation or a heavy falling animation. Uh, we're also going to be doing, uh, we're going to store another function uh, that will basically return true if the player is moving, which we'll use to play this new animation I have. Uh, scroll down to animations. How many folders have I got? Jumping. Um, so you see we have uh, just the normal jump in, but I've also got this running jump as well. Uh, so I'll pop a link in the description if you wanted to uh, download that um, so you can follow along. Um, so what we'll basically do, we'll use the normal jump when the player is standing still, and we'll use the running jump if the player is running. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate our falling speed variable here. What I'm going to call it is just falling speed peak. So because falling speed goes into the negative, um, we'll just have to, we'll basically say a falling speed is less than falling speed peak. We'll set falling speed peak to falling speed. That is a lot of falling speed. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to open up gravity and we'll scroll down to our calculate falling. Um, and what we're basically going to do here is underneath falling speed, we'll basically check. Uh, so firstly, what I'll say, we'll only do this if we're falling. So I'll say if, if is falling. Um, and then what we're also going to add here is an and. And we'll say and falling speed is less than falling speed peak. So because it goes into the negative. Um, and if it is, we'll basically set uh, falling speed peak to falling speed. Okay. Nice and simple. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll grab that falling speed peak and when we set our trigger, we'll just set that to zero. Um, but before we set it to zero, we'll use the value. So we'll say if falling speed peak uh, less than minus seven, we'll just test that for now. We'll play um, the f hard landing. And we'll just have an else. We'll just play our normal land. Okay, so we need to create this trigger and add our animation to it. Um, but first, let's just make sure that'll work. So I'm just going to comment out this hard land. I'm just going to add a debug dot log, and we'll just call that hard land. And I'll add it here. We'll just call that and. Okay, let's go back to Unity, test this out. Okay, so let's check this out. Gonna check the debug logs at the bottom. So that was just a land. Now this one should be a hard land, which it was. Cool. As you can see, it hasn't played our trigger because we don't have a trigger. <laughs> Okay, so let's go ahead and create that trigger now. So I'm just going to add our animation in. So this was in the pack that was in uh, the last download. So I'll click and drag that in. Falling land hard. Um, I'll just create a transition to it. And then on the left, we'll go to parameters. And what we'll do is we'll just create a new trigger. And we'll just call it land hard. Did I call it hard land? Hard land. Okay, let's go. Keep it consistent. Hard land. Okay, so I'm going to click on the transition and just make sure it has the condition of our new trigger. Hard land. Cool. And it's going to behave exactly the same as our normal falling land. So let's make some more space down here. And we'll click and drag that one here. Make transition back to empty because that means we're done. Right, so let's go ahead and uncomment that and get rid of the debug logs. Okay. All right, so let's give that a test now. Um, we'll see what that's like. So I'm just going to hit play. So that's a normal land. This should be a hard land. Perfect. Which is exactly what we wanted. 
All right, so moving on to the next stage. Um, so we got our hard land now. So now I want to create a movement variable. So I'm just going to create it under here and I'm just going to call it public. Um, actually, yeah, public bool and we'll just say is moving. And we'll return a false <clears throat> by default. Okay, so let's add some conditions in here. Um, so we're going to uh, go on to, uh, we're going to use our relative velocity. So if we go under gravity, you can see where we get our falling speed dot y. We're going to basically do the same to use it for forwards and backwards, left and right. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to store this in a variable. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'll come up here to movement. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to create a private vector three, and we'll call it relative layer velocity. Um, the reason I'm storing it in a variable is because I don't want to have to uh, call this function every time. The inverse transform direction, I just want to call it once in one place and uh, call it a day. So um, let's go over to our calculate movement, where we calculate our movement. Um, and what we'll do is uh, we'll set it in here as well. So I'll say relative player velocity equals uh, transform dot inverse transform direction and then inside here we'll use our uh, character controller dot velocity cool um, and then we're going to use this variable instead of uh, calling the inverse transform direction underneath calculate falling as well I'm going to get rid of all of that and just use the variable instead Okay, so now we have that variable we can use throughout the whole script. Um, I'm going to create um, an if. So I'll say if relative player velocity dot x is greater than 0 0.4, for example, uh, we can basically return true. So the player is moving. So it's not whether we give an input, it's if the player is actually physically moving. Um, and we'll also do the same for the Y. Okay, so this is good. So except we're only doing uh, like right and forward. Uh, we also want to be doing the others. So we'll also do a or. We'll do the same thing, except we'll do it less than and minus 0.4. We're going to do the same thing for the for the y. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now is I'm just going to set that to a public variable so we can have a look in the inspector. And then I'm literally just going to do that in in the update. I'll just come down here. We'll say is moving equals is moving, just so we can see the value of it. Okay, go back to Unity. Untick maximize. Click on Jack. Let's make sure we can see that variable. Okay. So it looks like we need to reduce the values a little bit. Um, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to come up here where we create our new relative player velocity. I'm going to set that to a public just so we can see the actual player's velocity. Okay, and what we need to do now is we need to decide the threshold of when the player is moving or not. So it looks like relative player velocity, the X 
uh, sorry, it's the Z axis, so I had the wrong axis, it's not the Y. Uh, it does go to about 1.5. And if I move left or right, it's because um, it's relative to the player and we're not in targeted mode, it'll always be the Z axis. Um, so it's only when we go into is target mode, you'll see the other axis being affected. So there's Z minus, Z positive, and then you can see the X. Okay, so our script is working. We just need to not use the Y axis. We need to use the Z axis. So I'll go back to is moving up here. Um, and yeah, not the Y, we want to use the Z. Y is falling. There we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove that now and remove the variable. There we go. Okay, so now we need to implement our new jump. So quite simple now that we have that function. Uh, so underneath jumping, and we have our set trigger jump here. So what we'll do is we'll just, um, we're going to add an if statement. So we'll say if is moving. Um, and because it's a running animation, we'll say and is walking. And we'll just add an exclamation mark in front of that. So if we're in our running mode, we want to use our running jump as opposed to our normal jump. So I'm going to cut that, add an else, and pop that in the else. And then, so what we want to do um, if we're moving and we're not walking, we want to call the running jump. All right, nice and simple. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, just make sure we have our trigger on our running jump. So just like I said in the last tutorial, uh, with the running jump, uh, I click on the animation. So let's give this animation a name quick. So I still got the default from Mixamo.com. Um, what I'm going to call it is just running underscore jump. Cool. And I'll just hit apply. All right, we'll give that a second to catch up. There we go. Um, I usually click on it, hold control and hit D. What that'll do is it'll put it in its own little um, own little copy, so it becomes editable, uh, which will then allow me to. So let's first go into Animator. I'll come back to that thought. And um, back to Layers. Make sure we're in the jumping layer. And um, Parameters. I'm going to add a new trigger, and I'm just going to call it Running Jump. Okay. And then I'm going to click and drag our new animation in there. Our Running Underscore Jump that we control D'd out. Um, I'm going to mimic our other jump, so I'm going to make a transition to falling idle. And then from any state, I'll make a transition to our new running jump. I'm going to click on tra that transition and just make sure that we have our uh, running jump uh, condition. It's just what we wanted. Okay, so let's check that that works. I'm just going to hit play. And we'll just um, hit control so that we go into our running mode and hit space. Make sure it does the running jump, which it did. We'll just test that again. Keep a nine in the inspector. Okay, I'll need to click on Jack here. Okay, um, so now let's quickly add our uh, triggers to it. So we'll go animation. We'll look for our running jump. Okay, just like we did with the other animation, we'll look for the keyframe on when to add the force, which looks like it's straight away. All right, so right at the beginning, I'll just add a function to apply jump force. Cool, let's give that a go now. So I'll hit control, let's go into running mode. I'll just jump off of here. Cool. All right. Perfect. Okay, so the animation, I'll um, put a link in the description to download that. 
Uh, I think this will be the end of this tutorial. So the next upcoming tutorials will have a huge effect on animations. Uh, we're basically going to be converting back to root motion. Um, and we're actually going to move from a character controller to a rigid body now, so you guys can see the difference. Um, and I'll also explain why. Cool. So thank you for watching this video. Subscribe so you can see the others. Um, I have filmed quite a few videos today, so hopefully we'll have quite a, quite a nice lineup. Uh, so yeah, I'll see you in the next one.